artificial variety is over a base, especially over general base. That's a subtle part, uh, question. But that, that question has been completely ad addressed by people like, like Janusz Kola. So, I mean, and it then, it, it's subtle, especially for the non-reducer structure. But because today I'm a, mostly talking about the projectivity. So it doesn't really, really relate to, to, to the stuff which I, I'm going to talk about today. So the second part is, uh, it's not just a stack. It actually carries, carries a modular, good modular space. So this good modular space is in the sense of Jaro upper. So basically there is a morphism from this stack to, the, to this good modular space. And then this good modular space, it should just only point-wisely parameterize the K polystable final varieties. So here I give a little bit intu intuitive understand, uh, like a explanation of this good modular space. So what I, I need to construct this good modular space is uh, basically around every point or at least every close point on the stack. I, I first want to know that the inertia stack, which in our case is just the, the automorphism of the K polystable final variety is reductive. Then locally, I can just have this kind of a plantation of this stack, such that I have this spec A more G. This is actually just the atar local picture of the of the of the stack around any close point. So basically, I just pave my stack by this kind of a spec A A more G. This kind of coastal stack. And what I'm going to do, of course, then I just take because G is reductive. Then I know that the invariant function will be a finite generated ring. I mean, in, I think in this conference you would hear a bunch of uh, GIT for non-reductive group type uh, type situation, but in my situation it's it's actually reductive. And then you just take this coaching by by in the GIT sense, but by just taking the invariant function, then you take the spec AMOG of that. Then you just prove that this guy's this quotient of this like a, a top piece, a top cover of your original stack, they can actually be glued together in the in the entire topology. And then you just descend it to, to, to some algebraic space X. And of course, this gluing is actually a subtle, subtle thing. I mean, somehow you have to prove a bunch of uh, properties like uh, the so-called uh, automobile, like uh, you know, this movement has to, has to preserve the automobile group, not just, uh, just, uh, just, just the, the kinetic component, I mean, and, and so on. But, but anyway, it's a theorem proved, I mean, it's uh, actually quite a recent progress, start from, I think, 2017, that, we know by now that the K modulus stack always exists as a global quotient stack. So this part is actually, I mean, although of course it's used lots of deep result in Bayesian geometry, but to, to say something is a global quotient stack is kind of a soft thing. But then this more like a rigid part of the theorem is say this global quotient stack does admit a good modular space and which is separated. So somehow you really do have this kind of space, which is essential, I mean, in the GIDK is parameterized the, the orbits in, in the orbital closure relation. But in, in this more general setup, I mean, you also have this good modular space, this definition, and it does exist by, by many works. So, but today I will focus on the remaining properties of this stack, uh, all this modular space, good modular space. So, so the conjecture is uh, this good modular space is not just uh, separated, it's actually proper and projective. So this, this part we, we still don't know. But actually there is one part of this good modular sp space, which we know the properties. So that's a part which is basically parameterize all the K polystable smoothable final variety. So I can think about my final variety. I can ask whether it can be deformed to some like a smooth final variety as I mean, Kilgorstein deformation I and mean, technically speaking. So 
then I just I just focus on this part. Then bio actually construction predated the, this recent work. We know it's a proper proper scheme. And uh, but this construction actually it relies on lots of analytical in, input. And uh, especially the properties just uh, directly follows from some work by Donaldson and Sun, but their work is uh, is very analytic of analytical nature. So then today, which I want to focus is that this part is not just proper, but uh, but indeed it's projective. And of course, I will find a lie bundle, which will be the same lie bundle, and then I want to show the same lie bundle is uh, is ample on, on, on this part. So, so that's that's basically the goal of today, today's talk, which I want to show that the the some light bundle on this modular space, some uh, this component of modular space is indeed a projective. Uh, sorry, is that indeed ample? So, but before to explain the definite. I mean, to, to this proof of this, like a productivity of the same light bundle, I have to explain a little bit of, about our recent understanding, like of this notion of case stability. So the original definition of case stability, I think was first made by Tian in analytical terms, then later in Donaldson, by, in, by Donaldson in algebraic geometry terms. I mean, they study some like degeneration and then the, so they study all degeneration, and for each degeneration, they attach something called a photonic environment, and then they look at the size of that photonic environment. I mean, I think you, if you have learned this topic, you, you know this definition. But then, around 2016, there is a equivalent there is a equivalent characterization given by Fujita and uh, Kendo Fujita and Chile independently. So, so they are using like a different uh, input to test uh, the the, the semi-stability or stabi uh, stability. So, so basically, they look at all the dividers, so which is on a birational model. So, so here I call it a G, and then they look at the two numbers attached to this G. So the first one is the log discrepancy. The, the, of course, we know this is a I mean, some like a environment of singularity, which we have to look at through the entire minimal program. So it's, it's something from the minimal program. And we know that uh, we call X has KOT singularity. If I know if th that for all such E, the AXE is positive. So the, the definition of the logic is I wrote it here. Basically I pull back the, the KX and I compare with KY. I look at the difference, but I shift the difference a little. So I add one for each irreducible component on, on the runtime side. And then to make this equality to hold, I have to put some like a number AXEI here. And that's called the log discrepancy. So, so basically today, for final variety, I just start consider KOT variety, which whose minus K is, is, is ample. So that's what I call final world. So except, except this A, I can define another environment which is called the expected vanishing order. So basically you have a birational model and you, you can choose any birational model such as the E is the divider on that. And then you define this gadget. I mean, basically you integral and then when T gets larger and larger, this volume just gets smaller and smaller. Then once you pass through the pseudo effective threshold, this volume is going to be zero. So actually this is a finite, finite integral. And then you just look at this number, which we call S. And the beta is basically just A minus S. And the, and the delta X, which is a environment of X, X itself, is just I take the informer of all possible E, such as the A divide, uh, uh, for all possible years, and I look at the, the the number a divided by s. I mean, I cannot do this for beta because if I somehow 
That's not the right normalization of that. If I want to find the uniform, I'd better to do A divided by S. Then it's a theorem for Jitang and Lee prove that when X is K semi-stable, if and only if this beta X E is non-negative for any E. So in other words, that's just equivalent to say data X is, uh, data X is uh, at least a one. I mean, here, I would say I would say there is another definition of delta by by Fujita and Odaka by using the, like the LCT of the of of the basic basis type divisor. That definition is better for calculation. So if you want to verify a further variety is k semi stable, then it's better to use that definition. The definition by Fujita and Odaka. But th this form form is only contained in the work of uh, Bloom and Youngson, and they prove that this form is equivalent to the form of uh, Odaka, Fujita and Odaka. And for, for our purpose today, it's better to just use this number. And, uh, the, and the second part is uh, X is uniform case stable, if and only if delta X is larger than one. I think this part is only uh, carried out by Fujita, but the proof is uh, very similar to the case semi-stable setting as well. So what I, do, what I want to say here is that if you haven't seen the, case, the definition of uh, case semi-stability or, or case stability, you just use this as a definition. So if you say, if you have seen it before, then you know that the left-hand side is defined for some like flux environment, then you know it's very different with, with the characterization of the right-hand side. Then of course, the, the equivalence is a, uh, very nice theorem. Actually, it's significantly advanced our understanding of the of the basically the, the basic notion of case case stability. So, for instance, if if you remember when we're talking about the the progress of the K moduli, that was basically from 2017 to 2019, and it's not a coincidence 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 that all those theorems is after this one. So basically this is um, some basic fundamental result which we, we have to understand the, the case stability from a new, different new angle. So particularly, I mean, I think the original setup for the, for the case stability, it, it, it's more like a GIT problem. So somehow people use the, the framework of GIT to start it. But now if I write it in this way, I think it's more natural to to use a higher dimensional geometry, something like a minimal program to, to consider case stability. And that's actually part of the story. But for, for, to, for, for my purpose today, actually I will extend the Fujita and Lee theorem criterion a little bit to an even more general set, setting. So basically that's a setting for filtration. So now I just look at the ring of the under canonical, uh, the under canonical ring of the, of the final variety X. So I call filtration on R, which is something just compatible with the grading, such that this R is indexed by, by all real numbers. So sorry, this lambda is indexed by all the real numbers. Such that first it's decreasing. So, so basically the adding F lambda I am is equal to the intersection of F lambda prime I am, and for all lambda prime larger than, smaller than lambda, sorry. And then it also satisfies some like a multiplication property. I mean, this is the natural one you should satisfy. And the last condition I want to post is some very general condition called the linear bounded condition. So basically I, I want this kind of non-trivial non part of my filtration only in, in some segment. So only in some fan. So, so in other words, I, ha I have this e minus, which is a real number such that below it, all of filtration is trivially the entire one. And I also have a E plus such that above it, all the filtration is just in uh, trivially zero. So somehow the, the filtration only jumps between the E minus and the E plus. So, this setting actually unify 
the two settings which we talk about. So for valuation, it will induce a filtration just in this way that I look at all the sections in RM. I look at the, the vanishing order of this section such that the, the, the vanishing order is at least a lambda. And I put all this kind of section together that's my F lambda. And uh, what's, so what's the special property of a, of a filtration coming from a valuation? Actually, it's not hard to prove that a valuation comes from a, sorry, a filtration comes from a valuation. If I know only the associated gradient ring is integral. So if I take the associated gradient ring, it's integral, then I know it's come from the valuation. So then there are second type of filtration, which basically, basically corresponds to test configuration. So that I just have a section in RM. Then I look at the section of S bar, which here S bar is just a section of S cross A1. Then because this test configuration is birational to X cross A1, then I can just view this section S bar to be a meromorphic section of H0, curly X and M curly L. And then I look, I can, because this meromorphic section, I know if I time some power of T, T is, just, is, a, is, is the parameter on A1. I know after, if I put this lambda sufficiently small, that means then this section will be become, become a holomorphic section, become a regular section. And then I just look at the where this lambda jump and I put all of them together, I can define this F lambda on N. Then you can ask again, what kind of a test configuration, sorry, what kind of valuation uh, comes from a test configuration? That's also, that, that can be also characterized that a, a valuation, sorry, a filtration comes from a test configuration. If I know if it's Z valued, that means all the jumping numbers are just Z, Z. It doesn't jump into other numbers. And it's also the, the associated greater ring is finite generated. So somehow you say these two are kind of different. One is just ask the greater ring to be integral. Another one is ask the greater ring. First, it's a Z value. The second is finite generated. Then one may ask, how do I extend the, the, the kind of the theorem by, by Fujita and Lee? to this filtration set up. And it, it can, it actually can be extended to that. So you, you just have to define the corresponding term of uh, A and S. So, so the definition of S is somewhat straightforward. I mean, you know, the S is a volume, but, you, but, but on a finite level, that's just given by this number, that's the jumping number times the, the, the dimension of, of the gradient part, which exactly has this, this, this gradient. And then you sum of them together, you normalize it, you got this SM. And then it's not hard to prove that the limit will just give you the S. So, so this part is, uh, the definition is, is, is kind of obvious. But the slightly more tricky part is to define what's the replacement of the log discrepancy. Because, not, because for filtration, how do we talk about the log discrepancy? That actually was worked out by, by joint work I deal with John, I mean, Sichuan John, that we look at the low canonical slope. So basically, we have this space ideal defined by this like a sub linear system given by, given by this filtration. And then I got, I got a bunch of ideals. So, so then if I fix the slope, if the slope is very small, for instance, if it's E minus, then I know this ring, the entire ring, right? Because of my definition. So then I know that the, the, the LCT of that will be infinite. So it will be very large. So if I take the slope to be very large, then I know that the, the function, the only function will be zero. So then the LCT should be defined to be the negative infinity. Or, or something like that. So that, that, that's very small. So then when you increase this slope, 
this this ideal along this slope will just become smaller and smaller. So the, in other words, the LCT also becomes smaller and smaller. So then I look at the T, the the, the supremum of all such T, such as the LCT, the log time threshold is larger or equal to this delta. Then I call that mu delta. So particularly, uh, sorry, here I forget to write. If I delta is equal to one, usually I just I just ignore this delta to call it the beta f. So basically, the the original defin definition of beta should correspond to the the beta one. Here, where I choose delta to be to to be to be one, and uh, and then we prove that the x is semi-stable if and only if the beta f is always non-negative for any filtration f. Here, when I say filtration, I always assume it's a linear bounded multiplicative. So this proof of this statement, of course, it's largely depends on the, the on the original proof of Fujita and Lee, and also we prove that the, the uniform k-stable version that if and only if the beta delta is non-negative for adding f, and there is some delta. Actually, one can show that the delta you choose here, the maximum possible delta you choose here, is is precisely the delta x. So. so so, so basically, we just give a characterization of the of the semi stability and the uniform stability based using this like a beta, but not beta for valuation, but beta for 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 more general filtration, defined in this way. Okay. Now I can come back to the projectivity question, which I I want to discuss. So first, I want to define this same line bundle. The different, I think the same line bundle is probably first defi algebraically defined this way by, by, by ten and the power. But it has been studied for a long time because basically on a modular space, that's where you actually have the have the way Peterson metric on, on it. So, so the, the algebra. But here I'll just give you an algebraic definition. In that I just look at the the relative canonic bundle or anti-canonical bundle, and I push forward to it, push forward down down to the base. I mean, because my bundle is relatively ample, then I can just take the the Manfred-Knudsen expansion of this, right, and I write it in this way. I, if my K is a, is a ample is a light bundle, then this M I will be a light bundle. But in general. The relative canonical bundle is only Q line bundle. So then I just need, the, I just know this is a Q line bundle on B. And then we just define the same line bundle as some like a combination of the first two terms. So, but for today, we actually only need a, a, a somewhat simpler characterization of this one is that when, since my family, every fiber is a father variety and the, if I assume B is normal and projective, then this semi line bundle is actually just given by this term. So here, the minus K over B, if I intersect M plus one times, it get, I get a cycle, which, which on the total space X, which is of co-dimension M plus one. So in other words, it's a dimension B minus one. So if I push for downstairs to B, I get a, one could mention one cycle on B, which is just a divider. And then you can easily, I mean, you can prove that uh, this divider is basically a Cartier divider, which just correspond, Q Cartier divider, which correspond to the, to the, to the, to the Q line bundle I defined above. So I just will use, I will mostly just use the, the characterization in, in the second characterization. And uh, because this definition is a very factorial, it's hard. It's not hard for you for you to imagine. I can actually descend this same line bundle to the stack, uh, to the stack on the uh, which parameterize the k semi stable final varieties. And because because this degree of this same line bundle is essentially just a Fataki invariant, if I restrict on some like a test conformation, then I know that uh, this same line bundle can be in, indeed descend to the 
to the good project space. So here, actually, I need the property that the, the I'm parameterizing the something like a polystable final variety, such as the, the same degree is always zero for if, if, if I restrict on any semi-stable final variety degenerate to it. So if I restrict on any like a one parameter family given by some automorphism group of, of the, like a, like a GM automorphism group of some k poly stable final variety, then by actually by some, essentially by, by some result, result going back to, to Futaki or just by, in our case, just by definition, we know the degree is zero. Then we know the similar bundle actually can be decent, de decent further decent to the good modular space. So, so, so in this way, we have this good modular space. Sorry, we have this lie bundle on a good modular space. So now I want to study the positivity. So I want to introduce some like a major, the, the first main observation to, to study the positivity. So that's the something which I call the Hadan and Schumann filtration. But here the filtration is not a filtration on one vector bundle. I mean, it's related, but not exactly the same. So, so what? I, so the setting is that I I have an X map to C, which is the family of final varieties over let's say smooth projective curve. Then I take the push forward of this for every M. So now I have a basically a a, a so it's not a ring. Well, it's it, it's a not a ring. It's, a, it's an OC algebra. If I put all this M together. And now for, for for each fixed R M, I can look at look at the the filtration F lambda to be just the, all the union of sub bundles F prime with that the minimal slope of the sub bundles is larger or equal to lambda. So this one is basically just the if I take the Hadamard filtration of the vector bundle, then I put all the filtration with 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 a gradient piece with slope larger than lambda. I look at that one. That's just just the the, the corresponding sub bundle. But here, when I say Hadamard filtration, maybe it's a bad choice of uh, of language. What I want to mean is that I just make, look at the cell bundle. I restrict on my RM. So remember, RM now is just a vector space, which is just a one, fi one fiber. Now I restrict on this. I have this restriction map from the, the vector bundle to this one fiber. Then I look at the image of the sub bundle. I call that one to be the Hadamard filtration for this, this ring R, not for the vector bundle. So, so particularly if I put all M together, actually, I know that this will give me a linear bounded multiplicative filtration on this ring R. And there is another description which of this filtration, they are not exactly the same, but for doing a symptotic environment, they just behave exactly the same. So that one, the definition is even simpler, that I just look at the I look at the F prime filtration, which such as the F prime lambda part is just given by the image from the restriction, again, from the so some sub bundle of RM. But this time I just look at the image of RM tensor F upper star minus lambda P. Here lambda is not, a, if it's not an integer, you just run, you just run down. And, and, and it's easy to prove that this, Filtration, they are asymptotically, asymptot asymptot they are just the same because for the Hadamard filtration, it sits between this F lambda plus 2G and the F lambda minus 2G. And the reason is very simple because we know that the semi stable bundle, the, if the slope is larger than 2G, it's always global generated, globally generated. So that's basically just boiled down to, 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 I mean, this fact just boiled down to that. So any questions so far? So, okay, now I want to give you the first, the proof of the first non-trivial statement related to the positivity of the same line bundle. So this is a, a result by Kodogony and Kafavi. 
which they show that if the x t if I have a remember if I have a family of final varieties over a curve. Now if I assume my general fiber is k semi stable, then I want to show that the the semi line bundle the degree is actually non negative. So actually I want to remark that the ideal of looking at the Hadamard filtration for fixed air. So, so Hadamard filtration for the vector bundle, that was the original idea by Kudogoni and Perkfavi. The proof here I gave was kind of like enhance their argument using the graded, graded linear bounded graded multiplication, I mean, using the environment we, we, we define for filtration. And that will actually, I think, simplify their argument uh, quite a bit. But, but somehow the, the essential idea is the same, but we just put in a better package. So, so the package is like this. It's actually very easy to show that the, in this case, the same line bundle is nothing else but just the, the S part of my definition with some like a, a, a difference of the constant, constant multiple. So this is just some like this stuff to show. But but then, of course, of course the we already have the S part. We want to ask the mu. So if my fiber is K semi stable, I know that the beta of this filtration is non negative. So now I want to prove that this minus S is non negative. If this semi this assumption of x t is k semi stable tells my beta is, is non negative. So then I only need to show mu here is non positive. Then, because then I know that the minus s is equal to beta minus mu, which is non negative. But this non positivity of this mu, that's true actually for any family of final varieties without any semi stability condition. So this is the purely high dimensional geometry statement without any semi-stability condition. So because using the second characterization, we know that if the mu is positive, then I can, for surface large, sorry, for A, smaller than mu, but still positive, I can actually extend the, the fiber the section on the fiber to the to the ambient family because of the definition of f prime. In other words, I can find a d such as d is linear equivalent to this q linear equivalent to this this lie bundle, this q lie bundle. And when because my choice the choice of 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 the mu here, I actually I know that the x d is low canonical along t. Here the low, low can, canonicity precisely comes from that I choose my A is less than mu. So remember, basically, the, you, can, you can roughly consider that the, if I have a mu, that just means I can find a, I can find a section along this line, such that the low current threshold is uh, at, at least uh, is equal to delta. But here for, for mu, I choose it to be one. Let's just say the local energy show is uh, larger or equal to one, oh, sorry, less larger or equal to one. That precisely means this XD is low canonic. So, so basically I just translated this definition of mu into this property that the XD is low canonical along T. But then we know this cannot hold because of semi positivity theorem, right? Because if XD is a low canonical along a general fiber, then KX plus D if, if it come from the push for the, sorry, pull back from downstairs, that stuff, that stuff from downstairs has to be nav. Then, then we know this cannot hold. So particularly this implied mu is, uh, is non positive, which imply that the same line bundle is non negative. So here, what I want to say, I want to remark is uh, basically this non negativity of same line bundle come from two part. The, the first part is, uh, is basically the well, part for higher dimension geometry. This kind of semi positivity theorem, it, uh, it basically appears in, in all our study of, uh, of the positivity of, for, for families. But the second part is this part for beta, we require to be non negative. 
that precisely come from the case of instability. But somehow, you, if you put these two together, you conclude that the same degree is non-negative. Non and I think that was first essentially observed by Kodokoni and Patek Favi, although I mean the proof I print here, use some like a later package we I developed with, uh, with, with the trend. But now we want to go to the positivity part. So we want to really prove the some like uh, some locus is, uh, is projective. So we need to show some light bundle is not just a snap, but it, it should be ample. So somehow to identify this locus, it, we need uh, some, like more technical stuff. So basically we need something called a reduced uniform case, uh, case stability. I mean, that part is a little bit uh, technical, but uh, what I want to say here is that basically we want to find the definition which is kind of like the uniform version of K-stability. But now we want to find a version for K-poly stability. And the, the problem is, uh, of course, any K-poly stable for if it, we cannot expect to be, I mean, if, it, uh, if the automotive group is, is, is not finite, now we cannot expect to be uniform K-stable, right? Because uniform K-stable implies the automotive group is finite. So, so somehow we have to module this, this, this automotive group part, then to get some like a uniform version of that. And the, I think the, the first correct definition was defined by Hisamoto. And then Chile worked on it and developed the theory. And then we developed this theory a little bit more. So here the definition I gave is, is basically the definition I developed with Zichuan. So I think that's the, the easiest one to, to write down. So basically what I do is uh, I consider some like torus action on X. And then birationally I know X is birational to some T cross Z. And then the function field of X will be just something like the, the keys, the this key D and this like one alpha for, for some like weight of alpha. Uh, and then we know that the n t invariant evaluation will has a form that u and c v. Here u is just some evaluation you pull back from z, and then you twist by some like a vector c v, uh, where c is on is, is basically some like a vector field, right? I mean, if I take the if I take the dual of the m. And I, look, I, I, I take the, uh, I tensor with the real number, then I just basically go get all the vector fields generated by the torus action. And then I, just, I have a U valuation, I can twist it a little bit by this vector field. I got, lot, I got the t, some T invariant valuation. And uh, we know that actually every T invariant valuation come from this way. So then I can, def then for any such valuation, I can define the twist by some, by some C which can see the n is some vector field. Just I just keep the first part doesn't change. And then I feel the twist of the second part. So then uh, I will say X is reduced uniform K stable. If and only if for n in D, there, there exists a delta positive such that for n in D, the beta D is larger than the delta. Ah, oh, sorry. And right has a, there's the inf here, the delta, if SD could see. So basically now I replace SD by the S of, uh, by the inf informum of S of all the twist of D. So basically I just choose the informum along, the, along all the twist. And if beta D is larger than that, we call it a reduced uniform stable. If I don't twist it, if I remove this could see, I don't take the informum, this definition is exactly the uniform case stable, right? Because that's just, just say like a minus s is larger than delta s. Basically, it's, let's say the delta environment is larger than one. But here I twisted my, I allow myself to twist my, twist the right hand side. Then I can still ask whether it's larger or equal to this twist. And where the right hand side, I take the informum, which I forget to write down here, sorry. That's the reduced version. But the, maybe I should say, the key property of this is, uh, for instance, Chile now prove that the, uh, 
Q final variety is, uh, has a color asymmetric if and only if it's reduced uniform k stable. So conjecturally, a Q, a Q final variety is, has a color asymmetric if and only if it's k poorly stable. And for this, we only know the smooth final variety. For general one, we still don't know. But here, Chile proves something for general final variety. He allows singularities here. But, 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 but for the algebraic condition of k poly stability, he has to replace it by something stronger so that he has to replace by this reduced for uniform k stability. So that's exactly what I'm saying that we basically, we, this reduced uniform k stability should be considered as a uniform version of k poly stability. And uh, under this more uniform version, we know it implies the color asymmetric. And of, the, of course, the conjecture is the, the k-poly stability should be the same as this uniform version, but that we don't know. That we don't know. So, sorry about this slightly more technical part, but now let's come back to the modular space again. So what Zichuan and I prove was exactly actually this. So our result is completely algebraic. So, so we just prove that if I have a proper space, some proper algebraic space, subspace of this one, and uh, if I post a further condition that for any point on this sub subspace, it's not just a prime trace, it doesn't just prime trace some like k-polystable final variety. It's indeed a prime trace some reduced uniform k-stable final variety. Then we conclude that the same light bundle reached around this proper space is indeed ample. So somehow we prove this ampleness on some subspace, which the subspace has to have, a, first it has to be proper. Second, it has to, every point has to prime trace this like a stronger, this final value with stronger condition. Now, actually Kodogany and Kavavi essentially prove the same statement, but it, if they replace the re reducing uniform case stability by uniform case stability. But their result was, uh, in some sense, what was much more restrict restrictive because it's uh, actually, I don't know there are many examples that you can find a proper space such that every fiber is uh, uniform case stable. Because usually for final variety, if you have a positive moduli, then on the limit, Usually you, you will pick up some final variety with infinite out of them. Then it cannot be uniform case stable anymore. But here we just, but it can still be reduced uniform case stable. So actually, as I said, we can take the M to be the, all the polystable final variety, which can be smooth ball. Because for those guys, we already know it has current symmetric. So it's, it's then by Chile theorem, it's actually reduced uniform case stable. But actually, in the direction of Chile theorem. And uh, again, by the lot by Donaldson and the Sun, we know it's uh, proper. So then we can just apply this theorem. So while our theorem is uh, completely algebraic, when I apply this theorem to this like a smoothable part, it actually needs some like analytical input. And conjecturally, because we conjecture the entire modular space is uh, proper, and then we conjecture the, the K polystable final variety is always the same as uniform, reduced uniform case stability. So conjecturally, we should be able to just choose them to be the entire modular space. But of course, it's still conjecture. And we don't know, we don't know the two crucial input that the properness of the modular space and the equivalence between k poly stability and the, and the reduced uniform case stability. So now I want to discuss the, the positive, positivity part of the theorem. So, so essentially it boils down to the proof that if I have a family of Q final variety over a possibly higher dimensional base, if I assume that the XT is reduced uniform case stable for some general T, and now I have to assume, sorry, the F is of maximum variational. I mean, because, I mean, I don't want to get the positivity. I, I need the, my moduli really change. So, so then I want to conclude that the, the, the same light bundle for this family is indeed big. Then you can apply some, use some like a kind of Nakamoe-Shannon 
theorem to keep to get to the, the previous one. Actually, it's slightly more tricky than that because I'm doing Arden stack and I'm doing the good modular space. It doesn't have a, a family living on it. So you have to do some a little bit more technical work. But but anyway, essentially we just have to prove the, the second theorem, which then up by some like standard argument it will imply the first one. Okay, there are a bunch of inputs to, to prove the, the, second, the, the, the positivity, the strict positivity. So the first one is, 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 the, is, is, the, is the color amplitude lemma. This part was actually also used in, in the work of uh, Kutagoni and Patakafavi in a very similar way. And of course, it's actually, it only belongs to Kola when, when Kola study the, the positivity of the light bundle on, on for case B modular space. But, but here we have to enhance, enhance it a, li a little bit. I will discuss this later. So let's first look at the version, the original version. So, so basically I have the, this vector bundle D, if I choose D is uh, divisible. And then I take some like a symmetrical power of, uh, of this V, and I map to this Q. Q is just given by the push forward of some further multiple. And, and what's uh, the quotient? The quotient basically, sorry, what's the kernel? The kernel is, is precisely the degree M equation, which vanishing along your final variety, right? If I consider the embedding of X of the final variety into the projective space by by minus dk. So then the, the, the quotient will be just the degree m equation vanishing along that. So if I choose m is very really large, then I know that this kernel will precisely de determine what my x is, because, right? So, so in other words, if I, I look at the, uh, well, up to the, autom uh, up to the, up to the automotive of, of v, so in other words, if I look at the, for each point on the base, I look at the, the, the given equations of the, which is vanishing along this X. So that's just given by this cross manning. The W is the rank of, uh, of the vector bundle W and the Q is the rank of the bundle Q. And then I have to module this G L K. This are the moment of this V. And this map so far, I just consider that as a map on, on the set level. Then of course it's generically finite to one because I assume my, my, my family is of maximum variation. And, and then the, it's proved in the, in the, in the Amponius lemma is that there exists a very large M such that Ah, sorry, I, I'm sorry, this M is different with the M above. I should say M prime, let's say. There is some like M prime, so, such that there is a non-trivial morphism from this symmetrical power to this determinant bundle, traced by this minus edge. So this is, that is the point that for adding edge, you can find some like M prime such as there is a non-trivial map. The, the point here is that if my, if my morphism from B to Grassmanni itself is generic finite, then of course, any bundle on H, because the determinant Q is a ample bundle on this Grassmanni, then of course uh, this is always true. This is and the W in this case is trivial. This is all, then this is always true. But here I only know this on the set level, and I have to module the GLK. So somehow you have to pass through the frame bundle, and then you do the you say you do the argument which I just tell you that uh, the then the, the map from B to the to the frame bundle is just finite. Then the the pullback of, of this minus edge is uh, can is always. I mean, has a non-trivial map to, to, to determine Q. 
So, so basically I have to pass through the frame bundle, then just get this one. So, so now remember, what I want to do is I want to get the productivity of the same line bundle. And uh, actually by a product trick, I know for any family cover of curve, this, I have this equality, I have this delta determinant Q dot C is less or equal to the lambda X cross B dot C. At least if I assume that, uh, uh, sorry, because I already know that the lambda is nav. So I have this, the right hand side equality. So now I want to say the edge dot C is less or equal to the, to the right hand side. That's just, just essentially equivalent to the lambda X, lambda is uh, the same lambda is B. Then I have to, the main thing is that I need the W to be, to be a nav vector bundle. Right, if I never double the nav vector bundle, then I know the image here is essentially like semi positive. Then I know that if I dot C, the edge dot C would be at the most the, the M or M prime, the determinant Q dot C, which is less or equal to lambda X, the same dot C uh, up to some other constant. So, so that's what I want to do. I want to prove the double. So the option is I want to prove W is the nav vector bundle, where W is just the push forward of this or symmetrical push forward of this. So in other words, I, I need a, something like a V is the semi, is the semi positive vector bundle. Uh, 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 so the push forward of minus D. So if I if I have a, if I if I'm in the case of general type variety, and I replace this minus D by D, then this the same positivity of the push forward is of course some without by, by Fujita, Vivek, Kalmata, and, and so on. I know that comes from the Hodge theory. Now again, we, we, we come back to the question that now we are dealing minus D for final variety. So, but actually we, we can do something we don't have to exactly do minus k itself. We can twist this minus k by some pullback of the same line bundle because we already know same line bundle is nav. So, so if I if I twist it, this will not like uh, make it. Uh, this will only possibly make it to be more positive. But the point is, uh, I want to prove the lambda x the same line bundle is positive. So now if I twist it along something, it won't break my my problem. So so I'm I'm I have the freedom to replace minus k by minus k twist by the same line bundle. So then if I, if this is nav, actually I know the push forward of the this this gadget will be nav as well. Because if I do the, this one can be written as kx b plus this part. But now I, I push for some, some lie bundle, which is uh, kx plus some nav lie bundle. Then we know it's, the push forward is always nav. There is no assumption of that. So, so if I twist in this way, I know the push forward is nav. Then, then I'm done. So in other words, essentially, I just have to show that I can find a uniform n such that this part is nav. Then, then I'm done. And uh, it, it's actually a observation by Kodoni and Kafavi that you only have to prove that the, the beta of the fit of the Shimano filtration is non-negative along any cover family of C. So this Hadan filtration, of course, depends on the, the cover family. And you just choose the general curve there. And this delta has to be positive. That has to be larger than one. Remember, when we, when we check the snafness, we only need this delta to be one. But now, if I want to get to the positivity, I actually have to post some stronger condition, this beta delta to be non-negative. So, okay, that, I explained why this is true, but I, I don't think I have time to, to do. So let me just say, this is what I want to do. I want to show that the, the beta delta of the Hadamard filtration is non-negative for some positive delta. And, uh, so, okay, I don't have that much time to, to explain, but what, what we, okay, let me just say, okay, maybe just, let me just look at this 
page one more time, that if my fiber is uniform stable, then as I said, the, this beta delta is always, I mean, you can always find delta larger than one, or you just choose delta to be the delta invariant. This guy is non-negative by, by, by the first uh, criterion drawn and I prove. So, so there's, because of this, you know that the Kologony and Palakavavi theorem that when delta is, uh, when actually the fiber is uh, uniform stable, then, then you just get it. But uh, how about the, the, the twin stable one? So, so okay, the point is uh, actually there, there is also a characterization of the uniform, reducing uniform stability use this beta. But this part is actually much harder to prove than, than the, the original one. So here I just, so now I, because of this characterization, I know I can twist my Hadamard-Schumann filtration such that the beta delta is larger than one. But that's just that, but you just twist the after filtra filtration, that's not, not enough. So that what you have to do is, uh, you first show that this twin thing comes from a rational vector. And then you construct something called a twisted family. So you just, you, you don't just twist the filtration. Actually you show this twist of the filtration comes from a twist of a family. And this twist of, then this twist of the family, which will have give you the same, same light bundle on the, on the border. And then after twist of the family, you, the Hadamard filtration of the twist of family will just match with this twist of your Hadamard filtration of the original family. And then you twist in that way, such as the beta is non-negative for some like one, sorry, here delta should be larger than one, should be larger than one. Then you, you, you know it's non-negative. Non then you know that the, you, you find that such kind of um, like a nerve threshold and then you can prove the same creativity. So sorry, uh, I think I'll stop here. Sorry about the last part, it's a little bit technical. Uh, thank you, Chin Yan. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, questions, please. 